Hey, welcome back. It's Tuesday edition of Liquid Lunch on Newsmax TV. I'm John Tobacco. And uh, the Dow Jones Industrial Average at this time is picking up a little steam, up about 70 points, well above that 27,000 range that we're keeping our eye on. And uh, Bitcoin making a little bit of a recovery as we're on air, uh, just above 10,000. I like to see it hold right there through the uh, Friday close, which would be a nice thing for investors in uh, cryptocurrencies. And a nice thing for you is when we bring on people of all different political ilk to talk to you about issues and topics that affect you and America. And joining us today is Howard Husick. And Howard is vice president of research at the uh, esteemed Manhattan Institute. He's also a contributing editor to the City Journal. And uh, Howard, thanks for joining us for a uh, liquid lunch. Thanks for having me. Appreciate having you here. Of course, Frank Morano uh, joins me as my training wheels to make sure I don't tip over. And uh, Howard, you wrote a fascinating piece that was in uh, the Daily News on this drive for American, American citizenship. This is talking about legal immigrants who are not being counted, or they, they, these legal immigrants need to become naturalized citizens. How important is, is that in what's happening with our country right now? Well, uh, thanks for having me, John. Here's what motivated me to think about that. First of all, we had this whole dispute about the census, and should we ask people if they're citizens? Yep. And we had Democrats say, no, don't ask them, because that might intimidate them from participating in the census. Well, it turns out that a lot of Democratic districts, a lot more than Republican districts, have large numbers of people who aren't citizens. So the way that works is you get counted as residents, you get more congressional representation, but you don't get to vote. You're not a citizen. So I don't get why Democrats and sympathetic Republicans don't say, let's make sure that all these legal immigrants become citizens. Then you don't have to worry about participating in the census and being scared to do it. You're a citizen. Sounds like it would help Democrats, Frankie. Well, would it, would it, would it in fact help the Democratic elected officials if primarily Democratic areas are home to legal immigrants that we're trying to make citizens? Yeah, by the way, it's a big difference. About 50%, uh, between 40 and 50% of Democratic districts have more than 40% foreign born, only 10% of Republican districts. So. It would make a difference, but here's what could happen. Once people have the chance to vote, do you know how they're going to vote? I don't know how they're going to vote. I don't want to predict how they're going to vote. Right now, liberal lawmakers can campaign and win with fewer votes because they have fewer voters. That doesn't seem fair or democratic to me. So as it stands now, uh, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who Correct. represents substantially fewer citizens than, say, Max Rose, she, um, is, she gets to represent fewer citizens, even, even though that she and Max Rose represent about the same population. Not only fewer citizens, but fewer voters. Mm -hmm. How many votes did it take uh, AOC to win her primary? 16,000. That's how, that's how few votes she needed to become a national celebrity. How many did uh, Joe Crowley get in that race? 14,000. 14,000. So 2,000 miserable people decided to go out that day and vote for Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez and go for a whole new souped-up version of corruption of the political process. I mean, Crowley was bad enough in his own right. He's part of the swamp. But... She's like taking to a whole new level. I think Crowley probably should come out of retirement. Well, I'm just making the point that very <laughs> few people voted. Yeah. And one of the reasons they didn't vote is they can't vote. They're not citizens. So getting back to your original question, John, was this important for our national conversation yes. and all of that? It's important because people need to be citizens of the United States if they're going to participate in our democracy. If we're going to have a long-term situation where large numbers of our residents don't become citizens, how do we have a vibrant democracy in that case? It uh, seems self-evident. You are one of the most accomplished uh, scholars and thinkers when it comes to the issue of housing in the whole Thank country. In, in the final minute that we have left, Kamala Harris has proposed a $100 million plan mm -hmm. to offer housing subsidies to uh, minorities. Good idea or bad idea? It, as for the minority aspect, I'll stay away from that. Her specific proposal is to give people a subsidy for their down payment. Here's why I think that's a very dangerous idea. People need to save for that down payment so they can be qualified to be homeowners. 
If you can't save that 5%, what's the chance that you're going to have money put aside when the roof leaks, when the uh, 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 air conditioning breaks in this heat wave that we've been having? And, so it's a bad idea for that reason. I think minority people will be especially hurt because programs like this have been tried in the past. And delinquencies and foreclosures hurt the people who are just clawing their way up the most. And uh, I want to thank Howard Hussick. And uh, as you aptly pointed out in your piece on Kamal Harris' plan, um, the rate of foreclosure and delinquency is about three times that for minority people. So given the handout doesn't always make people vested. Thank you for vesting in the show. Stay right there. Thank you to Howard Hussick. We'll be back right after this.